Hi everyone, welcome along to the channel. I'm Bree, and today we're taking a look at two little tiny tables that I decided to buy for myself off of Facebook Marketplace. Here's a picture of one of them. I don't have a picture of both um, together, unfortunately. And when you watch the video, you'll kind of think that there was only one of them, but in actual fact, there was two, and we did both of them together. Um, they were supposed to be a nice little quiet weekend project. Yeah, it didn't work out being like that. And I'll tell you why um, across the course of the video. So if you're ready to get going, let's get into it. So let's take a tour of one of the uh, little tables first of all. Um, they both were exactly the same. They have this very heavy red stain, I think, or paint on the top. Um, it was several layers of something on the top of it there. Um, that extra mark is where I've put some paint on it, so you need to worry about that. Um, the most, I don't know, surprising thing about this was the screws that were just left hanging out. So. Uh, the first thing that we did was to go in and pull the top off um, away from the bottom. Um, I didn't do this the first time around, this is the second one and the first time around I pulled the entire thing apart and that was a big mistake. But this time around I learnt my lesson and just removed the top from the bottom. Um, still took a lot of, a lot of messing around, the, the finish was so thick I had to actually cut through it. Um, before I could pull it off, but it was worth it for this uh, for this sound. Hang on a second. It was worth it for this. Oh yeah. So then, of course, we had to strip everything. We stripped the top and the bottom of both tops. Um, used lots and lots of stripper because it's Queensland in summer which means that it is humid and hot and windy. Although I've got to say this week we've had some fairly nice weather but usually it is so we did fling loads, loads of, uh, of stripper on. And because I'm so impatient, I started stripping it off before I probably should have, which meant that there was a lot left over. And I spent a bit more time than I should have actually scratching at stuff rather than just kind of scraping it away. just want to take a moment to thank you for just being here. Um, it's so exciting to me that people want to watch the content that I'm putting out. You've no idea every time I see a new subscriber I'm like jumping around the room for joy. Um, so if you want to subscribe if you haven't already feel free to um, click on the subscribe button and the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I make new videos. Um, it would also really be useful if you could like this video and make a comment on it because that means that YouTube um, puts a bit more emphasis on it and it gets a bit more airplay. Thanks for that. I discovered with this second layer of stripper that there was a whole pile of white um, filler underneath the red paint all the way around the edges, um, which wasn't that much fun to find. I had to scrape all of that out and, uh, and find the bottom of it. You can see it especially along the edges here. It's just gross stuff and totally unnecessary it turned out. So once all the stripping was done, I got to the mineral turpentine 
which is what it's known by in Australia. I'm pretty sure everywhere else in the world it's called mineral spirits. And uh, scrubbed off the last of the stripper and made sure that it wasn't going to interfere any further. Then we got into sanding. Um, we sanded tops and the bottoms of both of them. Um, I did the tops a lot better than I did the bottoms. I would, didn't spend a lot of time on the bottoms because I knew that, that they wouldn't be seen very much. Um, but they got, they got a little bit of love. But you can see that the top here came up absolutely beautiful. You can also see the little, um, the different bits of timber that we used to put this together, which was a little bit strange. So the next fun thing to do was to scrape the uh, the goosies out of the um, what are they called mm, grooves grooves next thing to do was to scoop the goosies out of the grooves and I started off using a scraper to do this um, which worked okay to get some but once I started having to get really close in um, and and scrape hard at it it just didn't it, it was it was digging up more more bits of the timber than it was pulling off stuff that I needed it to pull off so in the end um, I found that sandpaper was the better alternative than than the scraper for this Then I scratched the last of the white filler out from the edges. And came in with some pine colored uh, wood filler, wood putty. I'm helping mom. Really not. Once the putty was dried and we sanded it back, it was time to put some wood conditioner on the, the tops. Um, the wood conditioner is just a mix of varnish and mineral spirits and it just makes it much easier to put stain on. And the stain that I'm using is Cabot's and it's called uh, the colour Sassafras and I just totally love it. It's brown without being a yellowy brown or a reddish brown it's just you know like a full-on chocolatey brown so uh, it gives a much different tone and fits my house really nicely I made sure to concentrate on getting it into the cracks and you'll notice I put the thing away and then I go back because I forgot to put it around the edges so then we put it around the edges <laughs>
Then we moved on to trying to remove all of the glue from the existing frame, um, which took quite a bit of effort with an 80 grit piece of sandpaper, but we did manage to get it off and the whole frame got a scuff sand as well so that um, our paint would stick to this very shiny whatever surface was already on there. Um, you can see with this one that I have filled in the, the grooves that were in the legs. On the other one I didn't and I actually think the other one looks better. But, you know, this one looks fine too. So it got um, a coat of, um, of primer, coat of undercoat, just white undercoat. And I also did white undercoat on this one to see if I wanted to do the bases in white. And from this, I discovered that I really didn't. When the undercoat was dry, I just went around and fixed up a few cracks that I didn't see beforehand. Um, just using some general purpose filler in white. And then it was on to the painting. I'm using this very dark grey. It's um, not a named colour. It's just a sample pot that I bought at Bunnings for two bucks. Um, I'm pretty sure it's actually wall paint, <laughs> but that's cool. Did the job. I used, did two coats of um, the grey to get it to the, to the right colour. And this is me the next morning putting on the second coat. And once that coat was dry, the only thing left was to attach it back to the, uh, the top. Uh, the first screw that I used was way too long, so I had to dig around in my screws box and find some uh, appropriate length screws. I also had to re-drill one of these holes because I couldn't get the screw out from that side and all it got was, uh, was cut back with the multi-tool. done just touching up the tops of those little screws so that they don't stick out too much here's a reminder of what it looked like at the beginning and now here's the big reveal Thanks so much for watching. It's been a pleasure having you with me today. I really think these turned out fantastically and they look really nice in my house. So uh, I'm very, very, very pleased with them. If you want to subscribe to the channel, go right ahead, click the like button, leave me a comment, click the bell, 
and we'll see you next time.